Happy Sunday, Brian. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Uh, you mentioned something about brunch. Well, is this it? It, it might be. This is it. <laughs> uh, and happy Sunday uh, to everyone who's watching. This is, of course, our first Anderson Penn Sunday brunch, so we have no idea what we're doing. It's an experiment. It's an experiment, uh, but we thought we would just get together uh, on a Sunday. It's not really Sunday right now, but you know what I mean, uh, and have a conversation. We do have some things to talk about, don't we? Yes. Yes. We do, yes. Um, I don't have any coffee, so for next time, maybe maybe, maybe that's a good idea. A little Eggs Benedict. Oh, yeah. Be You'd like that. Yep. Uh, a waffle for me. Uh, I'll, we, I'll work we, on that. This, this will evolve into something that makes us happy. Hopefully it'll make you happy. Um, when I first brought up the idea of something on a Sunday morning, um, back me up here, Brian, you suggested a joke off. Yes, and since, I did. And since you suggested, you have to go first. I have to go first. And, and first of all, what are the rules here? Um, he who laughs first. <laughs> well, that's me. <laughs> so if, if I tell a joke to you and you laugh, I get a point. Okay. If I tell a joke to you and I laugh, then you also get a point. So whoever oh, You can't even laugh at your own joke. Yes, yes. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> well, I have lost this already. <laughs> All right. Are you ready? And I'm not supposed to laugh. It, well, I mean, laugh if... But the point is, the I'm point not supposed is, to. Yes, yes. Are the points worth anything? The, 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 the points are made up. I get a free and, pen. You know, just, just like whose line it is anyway. Okay. The points okay. are made up. So it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Make me laugh, Brian. Make me laugh. Are you going to do just one and one I, or two and two? I've or? got I've got several. You said four. I've got, well, okay, then I've got four. <laughs> okay. I've got four good ones. What do you call immigrants to Sweden? I don't know. Artificial sweeteners. <laughs> He laughed. He laughed. <laughs> Artificial sweeteners. <laughs> Sorry. That's good. That's good. I could have laughed at that. Yeah. I think Justin's. I'm laughing. already behind. This is this is bad. First joke. You can tell me one. Oh, I you could. Got a list? Yes. I, can, I could. Yeah, I could, we go I back could. and forth. Yeah. Mine are not as good as that. But well, I'm that, not, that was I'm, the best one. I'm not so. allowed to. What is the fastest liquid on Earth? Milk. Before you even see it, it's pasteurized. See, I didn't even laugh at that one. Okay. Remember that joke I told you? Uh, is this the new joke? This is the new joke, yeah. Remember the joke I told you uh, about the chiropractor? Did it crack me up? It was about a week back. Oh, a week back. Other people are laughing. <laughs> I don't get to hear the jokes, though. Okay. Um, what is the least spoken language in the world? Sign language. That's not even funny. I think when they sign, I think they're speaking. Yes. They I'll are. have to research that. Yes. Yes. Uh, did you know that did you hear that there's a gang going through the town and they're uh, systematically shoplifting clothes in size order? No, I didn't hear about this gang. The police believe they're still at large. That's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> this is harder than I thought. He laughed. <laughs> I'm losing. Did you know that scientists have recently discovered a food that greatly reduces sex drive? It's called a wedding cake. Oh. 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 <laughs> okay, I laughed on that one. <laughs> Did you hear a uh, truck carrying toupees crashed on the highway, spilling everything? No. Police are still combing the area. Oh, that's good. I like these. I like these. <laughs> and my last one, antiquing. We do that sometimes. Yes. I went by myself last weekend to the antique store way over there. Found a record, an LP, a vinyl okay. that I liked. It was The Sound of Wasps. So I got it. Took it home, played it, said, this does not sound like wasps. Turns out I was playing the B side. So I don't know how that went for you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should just stick to pens. That, that's, that's good. Now, your first one, though. The first one. What the was artificial it? sweetener. That was a good one. I like sweet. that one. Yeah. Yes. yeah. I like that one. Uh, my show and tell pen for today is Parker 51. This one is an aerometric, and I believe it's cocoa. Cocoa, yes. Cocoa color, which is, for Long some way. reason, sought after. I mean, that camera wants to see it. Um, only came in an aerometric, as far as I know. Yep, yeah. 
Yeah, so it was in the aromatic era. I kind of prefer uh, vacuumatic 51s, but if I want this color, I have to get yes. an aerometric. Yeah. Yeah. Did you know, Brian Anderson, that the Reader's Digest, you know that magazine? Mm -hmm. I'm really with it, yeah. The only reason that you and I are speaking right now. Why is that? Because <laughs> in the 70s, I'm gonna say 78, maybe 77, there was a one page, I think, article in the Reader's Digest about the Parker 51 and how even in the 70s, although it was discontinued, yes, it was yeah. extremely popular. And the pen store, I don't remember the name of the pen store, but they, they specifically said the pen store in New York, if they get them, it had to be Fountain Pen Hospital. I'm thinking it's the only pen store there. Whenever they get one, it sells right mm -hmm, away. Mm -hmm. And that got me thinking about fountain pens and specifically wanting a Parker 51. This was in the 70s, I mentioned. <laughs> Where do you get a Parker 51 in the 70s? There's no internet. Yeah, There's yeah, no, I, I had to go to flea markets. <clears throat> it took me several years to find one at a flea market, and I did find one. It was a black aerometric. Didn't work. Mm -hmm. um, Which is unusual for an aerometric, really. I'm sorry, it was a vacuumatic. Vacuumatic. It was okay. a vacuumatic. Didn't work. Uh, sent it off for repair. No, no. Put it in a drawer. Forgot about it for years. Um, and just, you know, the interest in that pen died because you didn't walk in around, you didn't find pen stores. Right, and, right. And we didn't have the internet. And then somewhere it was around- tough before the internet. Somewhere around 2000, 2002, uh, I moved and found the pen again in the back of the drawer. And I said, you know what? We have the internet now, I should check this out. You still have it? No. <laughs> Getting to that. Um, the internet, yes, I still have that. I don't have the pen. I said, maybe there's information about these pens on the internet. Searched the internet and found there was an entire fountain pen community out there mm -hmm. uh, and got lots of information. Sent the pen off for repair and it broke when it was being taken apart. Oh, so that's too bad. <laughs> yeah. You, usually, usually vacuumatics are super easy to take apart. And... Well, this person <clears throat> uh, knew what he was doing. So mm -hmm. if it broke, I, I'm blaming the pen. Uh, and I don't really like hooded nibs. This is the original, really. And it's very yeah. hooded. For the US, I suppose. You know, it's Very hmm. hooded, yep. um, sleek design. I do like the design, but I usually like to see the nib. But I make the exception for uh, the Parker 51, um, uh, the Lamy 2000. Mm -hmm. Which um, isn't quite as hooded. But not yeah. quite. Uh, yeah. I think even the Aurora 88, the vintage one. Yes, yeah, still had were, a little bit more. They had quite a bit more. Yeah. This is a very hooded nib. Um, but I think that nib is very big in here. I, it's not. Nope. See, I am unfamiliar with the shape of this nib because you never see one of these taken apart. Should we take one apart? And I think we should take one apart. Okay. Not mine. <laughs> <laughs> Let me uh, dig into my drawer here. I've got two pens here. Um, I have this one here, which is another aerometric. Okay. This in my pocket. Do we know what color this is? Uh, that is navy gray. Wow, it looks green. Yeah. Okay. It's definitely navy gray. Um, and then I brought this for fun. Because this is very unusual. This is- I don't uh, even know how you have this. <laughs> this is uh, this is an Ario Kulik. Ah, okay. Um, fancy, what he calls a Fantasy 51. Oh, gotcha. Uh, pen, and this is this is the vacuumatic. Um, it's kind of in pieces. In fact, actually this one has a the barrel is cracked. But so we can kind of see the nib here. We can kind of see it here. We can take this one apart too. But just to show you what the vacuumatic's like, you get the whole, fills in the whole barrel. I'm going to take this off. Here's your blind cap. And so <clears throat> vacuumatic has, filling 51 has the, this is the filling unit. Uh, this one is actually kind of, kind of boogered up. But um, you would take your, Here's your diaphragm, which I've already trimmed down, and then there's a pellet in there, and then this goes into. All right, and the pellet, the pellet is inside top. the. Yep, yep, it's inside. Diaphragm that looks like a sack. Yeah, so you can. And it sticks into that. There's a little hole there, yeah, and then this gets pushed into there. There's a tool, but you can. This one's a little easier to get. So it goes on like that, uh -huh. and then you invert this upon itself. Oh. takes a little bit of doing, but you invert this upon itself and then it goes back in there. So. And so when you push on it. When it, you push on it. Pushes it pushes the air out. Pushes the air out and, and then, yeah. Creates a suction. Yeah, so probably should have done that in advance. That's, uh, 
Um, I like that. I have never seen that before. So I had no idea what was going on in there. You take off the hood, or some people might call it the shell. So there's the hood, and then what we have left here, got the clutch ring on there, of course. This is the, the all-important thing in the Parker 51s are called the collector. Um, and that's in both the... Uh, yes, yeah. So th this part is basically the, the same. Um, 51 Aerometrics use a little different breather tube. So on the Vacuumatic, we've got this kind of this plastic uh, tube that's a little bit shorter. Uh, I'll show you on this one. It uses a, a, a Sterling breather tube. But the collector goes all the way around the nib. Is it the feed? Or it's is essentially, there... it's the feed. It yeah. is the feed, okay. So if we pull this out... That's, that's the nib. That's the nib. There's not much to it. It's small. It's but conical. But it's much more than shows when the... Yeah. Much more than what shows. It's yeah. quite a bit much more. So when you pull this out, and then here's the here's the feed with the breather tube on the back. But there are no fins or anything? No. No. That's all right here. All the fins are in the collector. It's all right there, yeah. So it's always... That's fascinating. Always has ink to it all the time, which is why they almost always start up right away. I reach for this pen all the time because it's a slip cap, mm -hmm. easy to start writing with, always starts right away. Yeah. I did purchase this, by the way, from Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> you had to have that. I did. So I had to have it. That's what that looks like. Let's take a look at the... Uh, the and this is going to have a collector as well. Yep. yep. It's just not going to have the, the same filling system. Yeah, yeah, so... Um, take this apart. I've already got this disassembled, so... Uh, yes, that first, much, first, that's as first far as first, I can yeah. get with this one yeah. is, is exactly where so you're So there, there, there are at least two different kinds of, of aerometric here, so let's take the... Now mine, my, you call it a shell, the hood. The hood my yeah. head will not unscrew. Yes, yeah, so these are, um, these are uh, you shellac these on or you seal these on. So mine would unscrew if I heated yes, it up. Yes, you, 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 you need to apply heat to this, this juncture there, so this just comes off. I uh, happen to have the nib already off on this one, but there it is. Um, but yeah, there's, so these threads right here will so it's the same get thing. the shellac. Yeah, so then this comes out. Um, what's different on this one is this one has the, uh, I've got to clean this oh. up a little bit, but this is, this is a sterling silver breather tube. Did they all have sterling uh, silver breather tubes? A lot of them did, yeah. Wow. So um, you could replace this. We, we carry the stainless stainless one, but then this... And the breather tube in the vacuumatic was uh, was plastic. plastic. Yeah. yeah. So what usually happens here is the the, the sterling is so soft that, um, and, I, and this one has been in there so long that if I try to take it out, chances are it's going to break right here, and then you have to drill out. It'll leave a little bit in oh. inside the feed. So um, stainless ones won't do that, but that that can be a problem when you're taking these apart. Um, as for the rest of this. There are at least two different kinds that I'm aware of. Well, there's two main kinds. Uh, there's one where this particular um, housing, the SAC protector, is threaded on to what I would call the, the connector here. Okay. Um, I don't know what the technical term of it is, but it essentially connects the it connects the collector and it looks the, like the it's, hood. It's, it becomes the clutch ring. Yeah. That. Yeah. So the, there's a version where this this SAC protector is threaded and it will just unscrew off. Uh, there's a date range on that. I forget what the actual date range is. Uh, and then the other version, which is probably this version here, is this is friction fit on here. Uh, and it's very, very hard to get off. And usually what happens when you try to take it off is it breaks. Uh, so what, what part of it breaks? The, the end. So this, this part of the connector here goes to about right there. Oh. And so it, in the it, it, will, it will break off right here. And then you, you can't put this back together. Um, and you never seem to find the one that you need because there's different different sizes. Uh, but if you get this off, then your ply glass sack is just attached just like a regular sack, and that's all you got to do. But I usually don't take these off unless I absolutely have to. Right, because it's dangerous. Because uh, it can ruin the pen. Getting this part is is not not as easy as it seems. And this nib here. Which one did it come from? It came from this pen here. Yeah. They're all the same, though. They're basically the same. Yeah. There's there's some there's some design elements that are different. There are some that have multiple holes here. And it's I'm told that like this that. one is medium. Yes. Yeah. But how do we know that? 
Uh, probably because it writes uh, broader than a line. Yeah, yeah they're, they're not. Are they marked mark. at all when you get them no. out? No, they, they'll they be marked on the bottom, Parker, uh, and then the date code will be marked on the bottom here. But um, they're not marked the... No, the they're, not, they're not marked like modern nibs. Interesting. There's no, there's no extra fine, fine medium. None of that, none of that stuff. Okay. So. Fascinating. Yeah, so that's, that's how that all goes together. Um, line that all up and then just put some shellac there and you have to you do have to do a little work to get this this to line up so what you usually do is take this nib out here when you have this in and you have the nib in you have to you have to see where this hood lines up see when I got it tight there it's not lined up so at all yeah, yeah so I just kind of put my thumb there Unscrew it, and then you just move this around. And then oh, gotcha. That's how you... Then you put the shellac. Then you put this on, and you get this all lined up first. Still needs to go a little bit, but get it all lined up, and you shellac it on, and then you're you're good to go. Fascinating. Fascinating. So that's the Parker 51 in a so, uh, in, in my imagination, someday I was maybe going to take this hood shell off to see the nib and see that it said medium on it. But apparently, it's not going to. It's not going to yeah, yeah. do that. He'll so be, I'll be searching to, forever. I don't have to even plan on that. No. Great pen. Yeah. Yeah. It is nice. I love the cocoa. It's nice. Uh, uh, they did come with gold filled caps, but I kind of like the luster I like that. Yes. That, that, uh, that, I'm that still color looking for a, a vacuumatic, not in that color. I have to decide what color I want the vacuumatic in. Uh, so that's on my radar <laughs> nice. for sometime in the future. I'll help you with that. I bet you would. So now that I've uh, we've talked considerably <laughs> about my Parker 51, what what is that in your shirt pocket? Uh, I have today. I just grabbed this off my desk. And do I get to disassemble it? No, no, <laughs> no. I don't think so. This is uh, this is a uh, 1990s. Uh, I think is the vintage uh, Sailor uh, ribbed, which at the time they called um, this is a Naganata Togi. Um, design. Usually you would find it with a Naganata Togi. This one doesn't have that, but uh, green ribbed. It's got this semi-flat top. Some people will think this is a pro gear, but it really is a 1911. It's yeah, tapered no, on the bottom. It's, it's a 1911 with a little bit chopped off. Just the chopped end off there, the yeah. top, but then it's got the, the anchor logo on it, which I really like. Um, it's got this nice trim ring here, which usually I don't like, uh, but it's usually because most of the time you see them on, on vintage pens and they're kind of chewed up. And what um, it's not a what kind of name is it? That is a, a broad, hard broad. broad. Yeah, broad. But such a smooth rest. This it's, is like a felt tip pen. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. So, I have to like this because this pen is the reason I don't have a uh, a oh, King Cobra. It's just amazing. Uh, I had a chance to get a King Cobra at a pen show once, and I decided I was going to buy this one. And uh, it's it's red. It's it's maroon counterpart. Yeah, it. Uh, and was there a blue one? Uh, there was a dark blue one too at the time. One. I didn't get the blue, so that's about that's about the only color I don't have um, in the standard series. But uh, really, really a neat pen. Uh, well, I, I mean, I wish we could pull the nib in the feed and. Uh, it's actually not going to be. Uh, they're a little more difficult on these earlier sailors. They're, they're not going to be any really any different than pulling the nib and feed on. I'm just kidding. A standard, a standard sailor. It didn't take my pen apart. <laughs> <laughs> but I. Uh, one of the things I was hoping we could do on Sunday brunch is a little how-to. Okay. And I've suggested one for today, and you are on board with that. It's something I don't know how to do, uh, but I've heard that it is possible. How do you refill a Retro 51 refill with fountain pen ink? Yes. And I see you brought everything I, 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 know, I hope I have everything here. Um, and we've had requests for this, so let's... Uh, let's, uh, let's I've got my... This is one of the tread tread versions. Um, so if now you've I, got your, you've got at least at least five retro fifty ones on your desk. I <laughs> I don't I at least I'm not certain that's true. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so, so there is I didn't realize there was a spring. Yeah, here, there's a spring here. Have. Uh, there is there is a correct way to, that it goes on. You'll notice that the spring is more tightly wound on yes, the, one um, side, and that's what side goes in. It's a little tight, but then it it kind of slips over. So uh, you're going to take that off. This is the, this pertains to the short capless refill. Um, 
which well, is uh, uh, standard. Yeah, that's any one of these pens. Right? Yes, yeah, pretty much any one of these. I'm gonna screw that back on. Um, but we've also discovered yesterday that uh, this, of course, will apply to probably, probably most any type of ballpoint or rollerball refill. But we've not practiced it on all of them. Uh, not all of them. I, I, I brought another one here. This is this is also a, an old Retro 51, um, a roller ball. But this one uses uh, the standard Waterman style refill, 888 oh, or 5888. Oh, and you were playing with that one. Yes, yeah. yeah. So we, we did the same thing with this pen. Um, but uh, let's, let's Well, take... I, I was in the store yesterday when you were playing with this because I, I gave you fair warning. I wanted to talk about this. And it looked like it was almost more trouble than it was worth. Uh, it, it's it, it's not as easy as just grabbing right, grabbing a refill from your bag. Uh, the nice thing about it is, is you know, you, you can get these these short capless refills in any any color you want, as long as you want black or blue. Ah, so uh, yeah, that is. So if you don't mind a little mess, and fountain pen people are certainly known to not hate a little mess. Um, it, it, it can, you can, once you get used to it, it, it it's not too bad. So. And do you remember which, which one you pulled out? Yeah, yeah. So I actually, <laughs> we disassembled this one. Okay. Um, so that's the one we did yesterday. We're, we're going to show that, and then I think we'll just take this one apart and, and, and do method B. Um, so really the first thing, so there, there are two parts here, or three parts, I guess. Um, there's this black stopper on the end, and then the front portion and the tube. So what you have to do essentially is, is you pull this piece out. We'll show you how to do that in a minute. So that comes out. But um, it isn't that easy. It's not but that easy. No, no. We'll, 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 yeah. I'll take this. We'll take this one apart. I just wanted to. This this part is even even harder to get apart. But I did see you do it. Um, and then here is essentially is the wick in the middle. And so this is uh, kind of a spongy material. You can see it's got a little bit of ink in there but when you take this out as you see here it will be full full of ink full of ink um and and and, and warning on this you're going to waste a lot of water getting this clean yeah so, i actually cleaned <clears throat> that one at the sink yeah and it's i describe it as something of a straw where it's got some plasticky stuff on yeah the it's outside, got a and then whatever they're using for the wick material and i held it under the the running water yep. so that it would fill up and then i and squeezed, squeezed it, it out this way yeah and, and it Took quite a while, but yeah, it, it actually works better doing that with your hands than it does with the with the bulb syringe. You can you can get a bulb syringe in here and squeeze it out, but it works better if you just get your hands dirty and, and th that's of, as clean as I could get it. But then yeah. we wanted one that we could let dry. Yeah, so um, because it, it, if you if you take it apart and you and you and you wash it out and you leave the water in there, then it's gonna it's gonna give you a less than desirable result. Uh, the front portion here portion here or the four part. Um, has also this little wick in here. And that's the one you were cleaning. Yeah, which goes down to the, the tip here, and then this essentially ends up, there's actually a hole. Right, so the, the big wick feeds, feeds little wick. Feeds into the little wick, yeah. Does that little wick go in all the way? Yeah, into? Is yeah, there a little goes, hole in the, at the end of the nose here? See, that's so how it long it is. Is that what you're writing on? No, there's, a, there's just, a ball in there. There's yeah. a little ball there. Yeah, okay. so that goes in there. So you, you, can, you can take this apart and completely clean this. Um, Which is what we did yesterday. Yeah. So this is, and now it's ready to be. It's refilled. ready to be refilled. Let's. Um, we can take this one apart here. Show you how to do it. Right, and this one just came out of a pen. So yeah, this, this one this came out, with dirty. A, out of a pen, and uh, I've actually got some green ink in there. Uh, but, but what you want to do is get yourself a. I've got. I just got a hemostat here. You can use a pliers, a needleless pliers, or something. <clears throat> you can do a number of things. You want to basically get a grip on this section here. Um, in fact, if you look here, you'll even see I've got some player marks on here. But um, you try to avoid that if you can. Some people use a, a, a rubber band. You can use a, a gripper square and kind of put it over there. But put something on there so that you don't totally chew this up or, or, or deform this, this piece. So I'm going to just kind of grab on there and... And did you do any twisting, or did you? Just uh, I didn't, come right but out? you can. I just I, I pushed I pushed against. Oh, okay. You just pushed against it with your thumb. With my thumb, and that it, came uh, up. Yeah, fairly easy, probably because you practiced yesterday. The more the more you take these out, the more they're gonna. Oh, this was not the first time. <clears throat> yeah, it's not okay. the first time I've, I've refilled this pen. So, uh, getting this this piece here off is a little more difficult. I saw you uh, use <clears throat> a gripper square for that. Used yesterday. a gripper square. You can use the same idea. 
Uh, there's almost nothing to grab here. Um, so if you want to take this apart, and, and what we're finding here is that maybe this is not necessarily necessarily necessary, uh, but you can, right. um, can kind of kind of get it off. You did it yesterday with this. I got one. it with that. It yeah. was there. You go. Whoops. No, I, this time I actually pulled it out. Oh here. yes. <laughs> So that part's in there, but we can we can pull this out if we wanted to clean that. I'm going to choose to leave it in there for now, if I can get this back in the there. And the the wick inside the tube here comes out. Yeah, so from we'll the back. let's pull that out. I'm going to push this in here. And, and this is so this is be this green, is, isn't it? yeah this is going to be green because I've got green ink in here. Uh, but this is what it looks like. Right, that's what it looked like, except mine was purple yesterday yep. before I held it under water and cleaned it, cleaned it, yeah, cleaned it. You can see I've got little ink on there, so it's, uh, I'm not going to touch it, but if you put it under water, you actually won't get too dirty when you're, when you're doing this, but um, you pull that out and clean it, and that's what that looks like. Now, Dave was saying that he no longer <clears throat> takes the whole thing apart. Yeah, he this, doesn't even this, clean it. This is quite an ordeal. And, and, he takes this off mm -hmm. and just puts more ink in there. Yeah, and so we tried that, and it actually works pretty well. And, and, and I guess when you think about it, it's it, it's a six dollar refill. Um, and so if you if you screw it up after a couple of times, then it's you know it's not a big deal. Uh, and I know Dave has done this multiple times. Uh, so I've got uh, Monteverdi Jade Noir in here, and I've got my syringe. And I'm going to fill this up. And so you can actually add to this at any time, so you don't have to wait until. Right, so the easy way to do it is just to take the back end off. Take this back end off. And do what you're about to do now. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't mess with the rest of and it. And you, you put it over. I'm going to put it over here because I don't want to make a mess. But I'm going to very. Does it, does it drip out the It bottom? will drip out. And okay. if you get too much, it will be, you know, it'll be a little. Messy. A little messy, and you want to get it off. You already but, got uh, something on my paper. Oh, sorry. Good thing we're at a pen store where you can get more. <laughs> so I'm just going in. I have a little bit of a hard time seeing it, but I can I can see it absorbing I, into I, the. I saw it dripping already, but I could be wrong. And when there's too much in there, it will just start dripping out. And Dave says he does this even if he's changing ink colors. Yeah, yeah. So and for him, is, there's no reason to take it apart and clean it. This is not absorbing. So it so. must be saturated. Yeah, it's got to be saturated. So There's a little bit of space in there for this, this portion here of the... But you also what you also can do is you can take that out and then just saturate the... Um, the wick. The wick. I'm going to put this on, and I'm going to show this other method here. I got some on my hands. Um, so that's nice. But what uh, what Dave was telling me he does, he does this method where he will just pull this out and then just hold on to it this way. Right, and, and he does it with a pipette. Yeah, it is with the pipe pen. I'm going to go on this end because it's got the hole. That's the hole for that front wick. And let's see what happens here. Oh, look at so that. now you can see that filling up. Very nice. Well, that, that's only because we cleaned it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it'll take a while for it to fully get down there, but you can see it's... There we go. Now it's starting to oh, come out. Yeah, look at that. But it's not fully saturated because you can see over here. It's still whitish. It's still whitish. I wonder if you can just put it in an ink file. And, 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 and yeah, will, we were talking it, about will that. It, will it wick it up? Very, very similar to the Parker 61 had this, this type of uh, filling system, essentially, where you just stick it in ink and then it will. So, yeah, you can just. And then it, Put it in like yeah. that. Um, 
But now that we've got that, we can just, let's just take this out. I think it's out backwards. Oh, yeah. Probably not gonna make too much of a difference, but uh, let's see. Yeah, I think I, for starters, if I wanted to do this, I would use Dave's method. I'd yeah. take the back end off yeah. and just put the new ink in. So now with this with this method, because we cleaned this As front cleaned part, <laughs> portion, um, it's going to take a while. it's going to take a while for that ink to get down there. Uh, so maybe may, maybe the completely cleaning method is not. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, but it, it will it will start to come out. Then it'll you know. But it's nice to know that you can. Yes, yeah. So if you if you want if you want green or you need green, <clears throat> or you want red, dip it in there. Probably dip it in here. Yeah. You can uh, you can do that. I guess if you're going to use the method where you don't clean it, or you just take the back end off and <clears throat> put the new ink in, you should probably wait until it's run out of ink. You don't have to. No, I mean, we, we did this. I filled this up the other day, and I wrote with it. So now I put more ink in it. But yeah, but you see, put the same color. I, actually, I didn't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it will, and that's because we don't have this. This wick is not not fully um, fully absorbed here. In fact, if we take this off, we'll see. That little wick in the front, I don't know that it ever got really clean. It was always hiding ink in there somewhere. We're starting to get there. Yeah, so see, it's see, it's not, even, it's not yeah. quite, it's just getting down in there. Is that the same material as we it seems It seems like it'd be a little bit, uh, a little bit stiffer than yeah. the other part. So it's starting to get there. Uh, yeah, and if you don't clean it out, you'll always be some ink in there, so. That was enough, but it'll get there eventually. But that's how you do it. Oops. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't see myself doing this a lot. <laughs> no, well, the good thing of it, you know, and, because these are very affordable. Yeah, they're 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 not expensive. You know what I might do is uh, take the back off and just put in the ink color that I want. Yeah. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Yeah. Um, yeah, this this will work. Of course, you know we're filming, so it. <laughs> yeah, well, of course not. A, there we go. There, there we go. I just finally came in, and boy, that's that's a nice. It's just starting to get there. But uh, this particular pen I had be, before a couple days ago, I had inked with uh, another Monteverdi uh, green ink that we had sitting around here in the shop, and I had this pen sitting on my desk for probably two years, with that ink in it. Uh, so I'm sure people are going to wonder, well, you know, this fountain pen ink, is it going to dry? Oh, well, yeah, it just, <clears throat> it wrote right away. Yeah, it, it, it wrote, it, it, it's always written. So um, if you get too much ink in there, you are going to see some pooling, maybe at the tip until, you know, if it's if it's completely saturated. But in uh, uh, other words, uh, other words it, it, it'll write just like the other refills. Very nice, very nice. So it is possible. And it's absolutely possible. And you can take them apart completely and clean them really yeah. well, or just go the easy route. Of course, of course, Dave watched us do that, and then he told yes, us. Yes, yes. He told us after we completely he took it apart. He may not have known what we were doing. <laughs> or though, he may have known what we were doing and yeah. waited. Um, but he said that, I guess, he, I got the impression he does that quite often. Yeah, he, he, he uses Aurora Black. So he just keeps filling up with black and ah, that's the best black that is the best that's, black yeah. that's the best black this is a nice pen is, isn't it nice i, I, I don't like, know what I, it is i like those those acid etched <laughs> nice. uh pens yeah uh, that's it that's it that's all i've got planned you got anything else excellent no i don't uh bike ride sure all right see you all next week bye